I kind of took them out of Proverbs. I'll read the, I'll read the, um, the verses as I go, starting with Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. Proverbs 10, verses 4 through 5. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. Who, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 12, verse 11. Who work their land will have abundant food, but who chases fantasies has no sense. 13.4, a sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. 14.23, all hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. 21.3, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. And chapter 22, verse 29, do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. May God add his blessing to these readings. Look to the ants. Solomon tells those who resist the Bible work ethic, ants are social animals. They have a natural division of labor. Different groups do different things. And it's interesting in the Bible that Solomon refers to ants as she, because except for, uh, except for uh, uh, drones, male workers, uh, almost all ants are female. It's a fact, but, but how, did, how did the Bible writer know that? Somehow he, he seemed to know. And uh, uh, ants communicate with their antennas. Uh, they... Um, and they also pass scent clues. When they find some good food, they mark it with scent glands so that, so that other ants can go right upon the trail. So we think that humans rule the world, right? You know, there's a lot of humans everywhere. What is it, somewhere over seven billion of us? We are 3% of the animal biomass of the world. Ants or 17%. So who rules the world? <laughs> ants are people. They outnumber us, they outmass masses. They're an army. And uh, you think about it, do ants ever complain about their jobs? Do they grumble about they don't really like the queen and they wish they were in another hive or something? If they were in another hive, the other hive would kill them. They don't want, they just want their own. Um, but they set a great example of working cheerfully, being about their business, what God created them to do. So, is the work ethic dead in America? I think America became great partly because people worked in America to build us into the greatest nation on earth. And this was a blessing of the European Protestants who brought this work ethic over from the old world that God sent it and is a part of our legacy and history. But we have challenges to the work ethic in America today. A lot of people say that work is misery, that we only work because we must. You know the statement that people give, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. 
And that's taken from uh, a Walt Disney movie, that phrase, but they changed the phrase. Do you remember the original phrase? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What did the Seven Dwarfs sing when they went to work? I ho, I ho, it's off to work I go. And they were going off to work in the mines to pound rock all day and derive ores from that. And they were just excited about the opportunity to work, to make their contribution to the world. And so should we be. You know, we, as we work, are doing something needed, something hopefully we are trained for, something that we can make a contribution to the world. And oh yes, they pay us for it. So that's good. Some people say the goal of, of working is to be promoted to management so you can make other people work for you. And so you don't have to get your dirt, hands dirty. You can be the man and you can tell them what to do and they'll do it and you can watch them work. I think in contrast that uh, People who are uh, promoted gain responsibility as well. They have to oversee everything else and they need to set an example to encourage other people rather than be excited about the power and perks of their jobs. Then there's some people who evaluate their situation, whether, whether they're paid more to go to work or to stay home and if the expenses and benefits are better by staying at home, they stay at home. And if, if there's a, they're better by going to work, they go to work. Right now, one of my nieces, I've learned, is, is staying home because she comes out better staying home than if she went to work. You know, she, she's got income and things that, that she, she's better off, she thinks. Well, the reality of this is that all of us need to do something worthwhile to make a contribution. I had a year of retirement. I had big plans for things I was going to, to do in the community, but the epidemic came along and killed a lot of those opportunities, and others didn't work out. And, you know, I didn't need the money to come here, but I but I f felt like I could make a difference, that I could do something worthwhile, and so I'm back at that. You see today that I'm wearing my uh, robe. You know, I, when I put this robe off in June of 2020, I didn't think I'd put it on again. <laughs> I like to wear it on Communion Sunday, uh, but, uh, but you know, here it rolled around and after the summer. I thought, well, I'm gonna put that back on. And I think, I think I wore a tie today. I think that's the first tie I've tied since June of 2020. <laughs> and I know how to tie ties. It's just I hadn't done it because, uh, because I wasn't working as a pastor. And so, so today I tied a tie. And we all have things that we can do. It's, in fact, Americans still believe in the work epidemic, or in the work ethic. Pew Research in 2012 found that 75% of Americans still believe that, if you, that you will have success if you work hard. In other nations, they don't believe that. Great Britain, 57%. Russia, only 35%. But Americans still believe that hard work leads to success. And the Bible teaches it. Proverbs 6, 6 says, Go to the ants, consider her ways, and be wise. 10, 4, Diligent hands bring wealth. 12, 11, If you work the land, you will have abundant food. 13, 4, The desires of the diligent will be fully satisfied. 14, 23, All hard work brings a profit. 21, 3, The plans of the diligent lead to profit. 23, 29 says, that expertise is rewarded. If you see someone skilled in their work, they will serve before kings. So the Bible lists at least 
four blessings of, of hard work. Prosperity, longevity, the abundance of science and the arts, and personal joy. So let's take a look at these. First of all, hard work in, uh, in Western countries, an example to the rest, has brought prosperity unparalleled in the history of the world. I think it was the Little Mermaid's uh, movie where she sang that uh, I have gasmos and gidgets galore. Hmm? Okay. But that was an application of the Bible work ethic. And uh, almost all first world nations are Christian, with the exception of Japan. In fact, out of the top 10 uh, uh, major nations that, are, that have the highest uh, per capita income, they're all except Japan are Christian. And uh, uh, that includes Switzerland, Canada, and uh, let's see, I have Germany and the United Kingdom, Australia, the United States. That's, that's uh, many of the top 10. It's interesting, the higher, the, some of the Gulf oil states have a higher per capita income, but the rich are getting all of it. And the poor people there don't have much of any, so it's kind of hard to count them. And how do news agencies miss that Christian nations are better off than non-Christian na nations? Uh, and that Christians are better off individually because they put away vices and work harder and better and over the long time earn more money. In fact, uh, you look at emigration patterns in the world. Where are people moving from? Well, they're moving from non-Christian, particularly Muslim nations, to Christian nations. Why? Because we have something, good things that they don't because of our beliefs. The second is longevity, unparalleled in the history of the world. Life expectancy in 1900 was 45. In 2021, it's 73.2. And if you look at the map of world nations, you will see that Christian nations, largely, and Japan are over 70, and non-Christian nations are basically below 70. That's based on a belief that all life is precious to God, that healing is for everyone, that hospitals and medicine are here to make the world a better place. Longevity unparalleled. We also have developed the arts and the sciences never available before, partly because we have the money to do those things. Christianity teaches that the world is knowable, that God leads to all truth and beauty, and science and the arts that we should bless others. And a principle that education for everyone is a Christian principle. And we want people to learn and not simply be indoctrinated as they do in some schools. You know, for example, in North Korea, that uh, children are taught every day to uh, worship their leader and to pray to him because he's their God. And, and our system doesn't do that because we don't believe that any human is God. It's, uh, and you can imagine the kind of education that they get out of that system. Most important is joy and work. A satisfaction in a job well done. That as we work, we make the world better. Christianity also brought a day of rest to the world and non-Christian nations have adopted it because their workers work better when they get a day off now and then. So we should thank God for work. We should thank God for the things that we can do to make a contribution, to make a world a great place. We should have the attitude not, I owe, I owe, so off I will, to work I go, but hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work I go. Great, let's do, put in another good day of work. Shall we pray?
Lord, I thank you for the work that I have that's not finished, and I'm looking forward to doing even more of it. And I think that in heaven that, that we will all work, that we will all have things that we do, and things that we love to do, and we can make a contribution that. Farmers will farm, uh, musicians will play, preachers will preach, um, and uh, we'll be able to do all kinds of things that we've always wanted to. Whereas in hell, they're cracking the whip and grouching all the time. Guide us in celebrating the joy of work. We pray through Jesus Christ, who himself worked the works that he had on his mission until you called him home. Amen.